not tolerate terrorism in this country. Now watch us drive. Three, two, one. Yep, I think it took. What the heck is Misu doing? I have no idea. She's rumbling Zane, around. Can you, can you take a look at that, please? <laughs> always, be, always be rumbling. All right, What's wait. up, everybody? Welcome back to the Study Break Podcast. Um, what are you doing? Oh, yeah. What up? Welcome back to another installment of the Study Break Podcast. Today we have Alina Frozadine, who is yeah, from. Yeah. Orange County, California. Gone. Alina, welcome to the study break. Thanks. So, I've been waiting to be on. Yeah. I know. Zane, it took a fat minute. It's been um well it's been a while. We kinda just every week since we promised invite we, to you. We have a very long um <laughs> We're just so popular guest list. We're so we're popular. We're popular. Yeah. Um but this podcast is a very special podcast. As you can tell, there's been some changes to the stew. We mm-hmm. mixed up some artwork. Also, mm-hmm. we got the balloons over there because yesterday was Jad's birthday. Pod. Birthday. birthday pod. A whopping 24, 24 years it's my old. my Kobe year. Kobe, R. I. P. Kobe year. R.I.P. All right. Yeah. All right. Don't Big get in any helicopters anytime soon. Okay? But are we ready for the reveal? But we got something special to show you. Jump, drum roll, Jacob. Whoa. Bang. <laughs> this was amazing. The best gift I think I've received in a very long time. Probably like being born was nice. But this was Fair. pretty, this was pretty sick too. Earth. Actually, you, Jacob, tell them about how difficult it was getting this for me. Okay, this guy. so like Zaina and Alina and like the rest of the friend group had come up with the idea to get like a, a, a study break, like LED neon sign like this. And so like they found it and they ordered it and it was like sitting in Alina's closet for like what, like like almost a couple a month? yeah like a good good part of a month and so like two weeks before jad's birthday he would not stop bringing it up he was like oh you know it would be so cool like what if we got like a custom neon sign to like put on the back wall like yeah, add it to the a, studio it's a like, good add idea. it to the art and i was like mm-hmm, goes on mm-hmm. amazon is looking it up putting it in the cart and you <laughs> We're literally like the Energizer Bunny. Like, as soon as you got this idea in your head, you would not let it go. And, like, last last episode when we filmed the episode with Andy, like, I think it was, before, no, it was after we had filmed. And you were like, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Like, we should get it. And me and Andy were just, like, looking at each other. And I was like, Jad, please, please, please just shut the f- up for one more you guys week. were gaslighting the shit out of me Dude. you're like it's too expensive it's not worth it honestly it's just it's a bad idea and then and then i came to you literally the day before my birthday and because i kind of gave up on the idea of getting a neon sign at least for the moment because i believed them because they guess they gaslit me very successfully and i was like oh let's get like a marquee board <laughs> Like a little more keyboard and like light it Janky. up and put it there and just put the study break on it. Honestly, would have looked horrible. Yeah. Would've this this obviously looks way better. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty yeah, awesome. I literally was just like, no, Jad, like we have other things. Like we need to really get all the bugs worked out for like the audio and the recording. And I like, can't read that. I don't know if we need to get any like other lights around here to like brighten up the room. And I was like, let's, let's put that like on the back burner. Let's worry about that at a later time. And you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. But this just goes to show that you can accomplish anything that you want through gaslighting. Yeah. Correct. Honestly, this is just a message, really. That so gaslighting let's is... talk about the epidemic that has a chokehold on our generation. Gaslighting. Gaslighting. <laughs> Misa <laughs> some some right. shit up. Pause for a sec. Aviation and go all the way down. Shout out to Alina giving us a <laughs> uh, traffic update. So, yeah. Um, Hell yeah. A little update. This little rascal right here. I have an H&M bag in my room and somehow got the handle of it all the way to her back legs. <laughs> completely, so completely, you think I'm skinny? <laughs> completely stuck. And Zayna was trying to, Zayna, we, we got Zayna right over there observing. She was trying to, she was trying to help. Um, Stop biting the... Co- okay, well, you can go. She's so hyper right now. But she got stuck and it was trying to get out, but wouldn't let Zayna help. Wanted to do it herself because, you know, 
Independent woman. Independent woman she's and all that. Except, independent. except it didn't work, and she, she was just sprinting around my room, thinking it would just come off if she just kept running, <laughs> and it didn't until I ripped it off. And then she hissed at Zena <laughs> when when Zena tried to help. Understandable. So that's what just happened. But back to our uh, um, back to the regularly scheduled program. Where, where's thing? Oh yeah, gaslighting. Oh, the oh, yeah. epidemic. Hell, yeah. That has a choke called on this generation. Honestly, I think it's, I think it's a good thing. I it think, comes in handy. <laughs> it do be coming in handy sometimes. Like this example we just gave you, clearly that is a prime example of gaslighting. Yeah. Um, do I think everybody deserves to be gaslit? No, because it can cause harm. Yeah. Should some people be gaslit? Absolutely. Yes. Wait, one more thing. This guy. Oh, brother. This guy. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. Misa, you always look a little bit frightened. You know, um, I'm just so frazzled right now, to be why? honest. So much, why are you, you frazzled? Know. Well, because of this and then the fan. But okay, we're good now, right? We can chill. Maybe I'm just like, excited. Of course he has to new... be frazzled on my pod. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, did we introduce Elena already? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Alina, do you want to there... do you want to tell the viewers about your little predicament right now, with your sensations? Oh yeah. So um, I got Don't sick like on Monday. Well, not like that. But... <laughs> Today's what Sunday. I got Sunday. sick on Monday, and I can't taste or smell a single thing. I've made so many good things. I made Halim for Jad's birthday yesterday. Yeah. Couldn't it taste really it. It actually tasted really good. Yeah. Was, good job. It was great. Thanks. Yeah, it was good. You should have tried. You should have tasted. It was good. I know. I wish I could have. Yeah. Did you save some? You missed out. Leftovers? Yeah. No, I'm going to no, put some in the freezer. You, you, Alina's been Good. stockpiling. You've been stockpiling stuff oh, yeah. that you want to taste that you Every haven't tasted last week. Every time she something for the last week, she'll cook it, make a little bit extra, and put it in the fridge. And she's like, this is my rainy day check when I can <laughs> taste again, whenever that will yeah. be. And then, and, then, and, then, and then yesterday, or was that earlier today, started looking up like, what am I supposed to do if I still can't yeah. taste like five They told me to after. go to the ENT. So... Telehealth, possibly, because Kaiser sucks oh, outside oh, network. Oh. <laughs> is everyone in? Sorry, Kaiser. Is ever if, is all the Las Cruces stuff out of network? Kaiser yeah, is you can only go to Kaiser. Only Cali. You can mm-hmm. only go to Kaiser they if you would, have Kaiser. They Kaiser would or Cali would have their own like it's medical insurance. We'll see, like okay, that. they have. They're so elitist, you know. That's Kaiser why I hate people exists. from California, honestly. <laughs> They have Kaiser in like California and like Georgia, but I'm not in Georgia. That's fair. Nor am I in California. Another, another thing. Another thing about. Oh, did she? Um, another thing about Cali. We talked about this a little bit last week, but oh, yeah, it was about my In and Out experience. Uh, Put in the comments. Put in the comments today. down below if you I mean, so are an In and Out fan. Not, not, oh my dude, she is their taste on something are right whack. now. In and Out um, is elite. So, Alina, you <laughs> think that In and Out <laughs> is <your> elite? <laughs> I would halfway agree with you. I don't think it's elite. I don't think it's the best burger joint ever. But you know, for the price to taste ratio, it's not bad. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're going to like a fast food restaurant and you're getting a burger, and it's what like four bucks maybe. In and Out has the chokehold win. No, it doesn't. On on flavor for four dollars. I would rather get a McDonald's burger than In and Out. McDonald's. You would rather get a Big Mac than have In and Out burger. Not even a Big Animal Mac. Like, style, like, like a, extra grilled like a and regular onions, I'd rather, no tomato. I'd rather have a McDouble <laughs> than wow, whatever the fuck you just said. <laughs> right, right off no, the dome. Listen, listen. I know that shit is. Tattooed on the inside of your eyelids. Hell no, because yeah. the thing is, I know that California people ride or die in and out, and I just, it's I just so good. I, I just, I really thought it was gonna be good. I had really, really high expectations when I went, and it just. Well, that's why you have to go into everything with no expectations. Well, it's, so you're it's always, hard. You're it's always... hard when every single person from California is like, "It's the best burger you'll ever have in your entire life, hands down, ten out of ten. Nothing beats it." Like, it's the best fast food under five dollars. See, burger. this is why my my opinion was skewed. Well, this is why my expectations were skewed because people like you, you have to be realistic. Maybe it's just I was not for realistic. everyone. So it is realistic. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, anyway, it I was straight never, carbs. Maybe I'm, I just had a bad time because I whatever. I got fries with like. Okay, their what? fries are not that good. No, no, no. no. I will. Well, admit. I'll say this. I got the fries, and like I heard that in order to make them <clears throat> better, you get them animal style. Mm-hmm. Because I facts. still don't like animal which, style which fries. Which I I don't see the appeal of animal style. It's literally just like ketchup and mayonnaise. Like mixed together, it's like a pink sauce and then some no, grilled onions. No, it's their secret sauce. It's not which a is secret like, sauce. It's, it's like ketchup Thousand and mayonnaise. Island. It's ketchup and mayonnaise. That, that is no, like, there's other stuff in it. it yeah, there's uh, pickles in it. Oh well, yeah, it's like yeah, whatever. Anyway, whatever that sauce was, that plus like uh, it's actually not called sauce. It's called spread. Yeah. <laughs> it you, is called spread. If you truly paid attention to the dining experience that you had mm-hmm. at In and Out, you would know. Did um, you know what that is? Dude, right. she's trying to borrow, 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 borrow into my camera bag. Miso, <laughs> what the heck are you doing? Um, Did you know that every In and Out is laid out the same? Mm-hmm. Cool. I really yeah. just am not impressed by any of this stuff. I'm sorry. The counter's always in the back. What is it? Left corner. Back right. Back right corner. See, I don't because it's straight. The 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 counter's straight in when you come in from yeah. the front door. I don't understand the appeal. Like it's it 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 was a, it was it wasn't. I want to say grimy, but like. It, it's just like a diner, right? It's supposed to give like diner vibes, I'm assuming, yeah. right? Yeah, kind of. Uh, I would like to put those days behind us. I don't think that there's a, it's that appe- that it appealing anymore. It also smacks anymore. when you're hungry at like Everything one, two o'clock in the hungry. morning. Okay, honestly, well, yeah, even well, even super super mid food will smack when you're hungry. You can't that you can't use that as a good reason. Um, but I will say this. I will say you're not this. wrong. You're not the, wrong. Yeah. The burger, the burger itself was just like, it was just like, cause I know that's supposed to be the highlight, right? The fries are meant to like, people always say the fries are bad and that's like the, you know, don't expect to get a full whole meal. Just the burger is good. But even the burger was like, it's just a burger. Like it wasn't salted that well. Maybe, maybe, maybe I just had a bad experience. Okay, it wasn't salted that well. Is... It was just lettuce, tomato, like a little bit of sauce. And it was just a burger. Like it was nothing. There was nothing special about it. Yeah, but you have to take into consideration that I think it's hard for you to go try new restaurants because you cook so much and you have so much control but, over the food that you make. Okay, and that's that, fair. Like nothing when you when you Specs. from what I've noticed, whenever you go out to eat, nothing is ever salted enough for you. <clears throat> yeah, because Jan has like three pounds of salt that he puts Not in true. every meal. Not true. And you also yes, put MSG and in your MSG. food. So yeah, because MSG. I think awesome. you're extremely biased. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying. I feel like you might be a little too critical sometimes. But well, what, then how does that explain me liking almost like all the other fast food places that I like? It's just in and out that I really hate this much. Um, he just has a vendetta against no, California. No, no, no. Yeah. I promise. Maybe if it was good, if it was good, I'd be jealous that I wasn't actually, able to go there more. Listen, because I'll think, say this. I had Whataburger for the first time when I moved down here because I'm from Michigan, obviously, and there's no, there's, no, there's no Whataburger there. That's just not a thing in the Midwest or at least in Michigan. I don't know about the rest of the Midwest. But I had that for the first time. And it's fucking amazing. The patty bone has become my new favorite fast food item of all time. Like it's it it is number one. I don't count Taco Bell because it's a different like genre of food. Like in traffic, <laughs> okay, but in terms of fast food burgers, it right. takes the crown. Like so, my opinion mm. can be changed. I'm not like not that I have a vendetta. It's just it's just not good. Or let's think about this in a different light. Or his I palate think... isn't refined enough to understand the flavors <laughs> that In-N-Out offers. I think that you're talking all this shit about In-N-Out just to gaslight and piss off Alina. I agree. I disagree. I totally agree. I'd be honest. Oh, okay. Then I would also say that all the food she makes is bad, but it's not. It's just In-N-Out that I just okay. don't like. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay, um, we're going to have to agree to disagree. Yeah. We... What should get burgers on the pod sometime? <clears throat> I'm so down. Actually, we were thinking about doing a car pod. Yeah, we need to do that too. Ooh. On a drive to Arizona, because we talked about last week how I went all the way to Arizona. That car, that car was fun, and I'd have Misu in the car too. <gasps> and I'll get her to meow a few times for the pod. <laughs> and then also, when we're gonna be going on spring break soon, we're gonna don't we're gonna, say FOMO. soon. Please do not say soon. How far is it away? Oh, it's like uh, a while, two uh, block and a half. Oh shit. Well, whatever. When we go on spring break, we're gonna do a podcast there as also well. Also, still January, that's be fun. and that's in and the end of March. It's the end. So. Of, it's the end of January. It's like um, two months. Okay. Oh shit, we gotta pay rent. Fuck. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, you're right. But anyway, Alina. Adult things. There were a few things we talked about that. Who? That's you, dog. Is it actually? Yeah. God dang it. <laughs> Let me turn my finger off. But there was a few things you wanted to talk about, right? Do you, well, you wanna? 
Oh, yeah. Do you remember what those were? Take it away. Um, What were they? I, they were your ideas. <laughs> Good question. I think we talked about... Uh, shoot, what did we say? One of the things was talking about um, the uh, application cycle. Oh, yeah. Don't did you worry hear about that? It. Yeah. Yo, your apartment's haunted. <laughs> Only when we start, everything started going wrong once the pod started. Yeah, as soon as we got the started, nice decorations. As soon as we got the nice, we're all excited for this new pod, and then Misu starts becoming neurotic and he's hyped up on whatever, whatever is the cat, <laughs> whatever the cat <laughs> version of caffeine is. But anyway, I think I think that would be interesting because I know that it's all of our experiences in terms of the application cycle. I'd say we're similar and then also extremely different at the same time because it's like the general idea of it just the waiting and all that it's the same yeah. but we're all doing different things mm -hmm. so i think we should go around and tell our little experiences maybe alina you want to start what were you doing okay. during your app well tell us about your application cycle so mine was a little funky mm -hmm. because i was trying to see if i could go in without taking a gap year because listen here i'm a proponent for time off but i graduated a semester early so i was like okay like i already have my semester off so going in straight away technically i'm gonna have my six months nine months whatever you want to call it off so it won't hurt that much so i take my mcat i'm like in the middle of the cycle mind you this is peak covid and i took i think like the second administration of the shortened MCAT exam. Oh, that was the worst. The short Ass. MCAT was straight horrible. up terrible. When did you graduate? Uh, December yep. 2020. Mm. Yeah. So same, same. You were the same <clears throat> class as me, but a semester early. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. But yeah. Did you end up taking a gap year? Are you getting to that? I did. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna get. That. I'm getting I was about there. To say, I, I was about to say if we're the same year. Okay. Anyway. Continue. Yeah. So basically, took the MCAT. Was doing my application like filling out like my primaries and all of that stuff i was in the queue waiting for my score to come back bombed it bombed the first one so then i pulled my application and had to redo the entire for the next cycle so that's why i was like essentially oh, okay. quote unquote forced into a gap year but not really because i was like but do you did, did, chilling. do you enjoy that the gap year that you took oh 100 percent. so it was worth it it was 100 percent worth it if i only had six months off i think i would not be mentally in the space to start med school mm -hmm. yeah what about you jacob well actually how about i think it's also interesting to talk about the actual like application year oh. like that year of applying and everything because yeah. it is it was awful it was probably the worst yeah. time of my life, like hands down, like at least, for, at least at, like, 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 yeah, no, I would say in terms of my mental status, I'd say it was the worst time of my life. It wasn't like there was oh, necessarily yeah. any things happening. It was just like the fact that nothing was happening. Oh my God. <laughs> just try to open your cabinet. She does that all the time. But the, the fact that nothing was happening and I wasn't, and we weren't hearing back, like that's yeah. what made yeah. it so ass. So, so t tell us a little bit about that. Oh, for me, like, I wouldn't say it was, like, on a scale of 1 to 10, if we're going to that, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would say it was a probably, like, a 6 for me, on, like, 10 being the worst time of my life ever. Um, yeah. But that's because I felt like I had my shit together that's when fair. I was applying, because I... Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not have my shit together at all. Oh, you know why? It's because of my Excel sheets. I <laughs> will die on that hill. She go inside. I will die. Yeah, on yeah. My let it, let it, let she she goes like, inside all the time. It's normal. There's a lot going on right now. Yeah. No, those Excel sheets you showed me those they're crazy. Yeah. I have never seen. Listen, I, it was it's impressive. Yes, like it's actually extremely one. impressive. Yeah, Wait, I, I had different my, tabs what? and. I guess I have it on my computer. Oh, oh yeah, you're, mine's you're on my... a Google Drive. That shit's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> because I the thing is is for me when it comes to like big things like that like even classes and shit that I'll take. I always put it on a drive because I always send it to people. Like mm. I had my friend from high school call me up the other day, not the other day, a couple of weeks ago. And she was like talking to me about the application, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, let me just send you my entire drive folder that I had made for my yeah. application. It's intense. It's nice to have it all just like, yeah. just in case you need it. No, I didn't. I was not organized at all. My application cycle was, I don't know how the fuck I ended up here, honestly. <laughs> but somehow. Hey, we're we all made, here. That's true. But Jacob. Tell us a little bit about because you had a different you you took yeah my a different I, route so like originally like 
in college, like my junior year of college, I was like, oh yeah, like I'm a pretty good student. Like I don't think I'll I'll take a gap year. Like I'll just like study junior year for the MCAT and then take it like over the summer or whatever and then like apply and get in. Um so I did. I took my first MCAT in the spring of 19? Oh wow. No. Wait. 18? I was a saw so- I was a sophomore. We were sophomores. So, no, it was, it, it, no, was, no, no, it was no, March. 18 of 18. It was like 18. it was April oh, of yeah. my junior year. Yeah, and you're you're ahead of us, so we we were we were sophomores. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, yeah, wow. whatever that was. That's crazy. crazy. So then, yep, bombed it, <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, Story you know of what? All of our lives. <laughs> you know what? Maybe a gap year wouldn't be so bad. <laughs> yeah. And I ended up taking essentially like two gap years, which like turned out fine Mm -hmm. um so i graduated in may of 2020 which was the absolute peak prime time to graduate from college it was perfect oh yeah um yeah totally and it was really (laughs) rough for me because like i like worked a ton when i was an undergrad so i was like super busy all the time always had something to do like always had like a checklist like a busy calendar and then when i graduated I had to quit my job that I was working in Tucson and I moved back home with my parents in Phoenix. And then, um, it was a really weird time because like I've essentially always had a job since I was like 13, like working for my dad or whatever. Mm -hmm. So this is like the first time in my life where like I wasn't in school and I didn't have a job. So for like, from like May to essentially like September, like I, I didn't have a job. So I was like, what am I doing? So then I was kind of like working for my dad a little bit. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to pick up all my shit and put it in a bag and, and organize my shit, like get myself going. (laughs) Yeah. So then I started studying for the MCAT and I started working at a new job at a hospital in Phoenix. And then, yeah, took the, took the MCAT a second time in, Fuck, I don't know. Mark, <laughs> yeah. May, May. May. It all blends together. That day honestly. doesn't burn into your April mind. or May of 21, I think. Mm-hmm. I think I took my first um, MCAT at that time. Yeah. And then that was your first? When I took it. I don't it, remember anymore, to be quite honest. When I took it, it wasn't the it wasn't the short version. So I took two oh. full you, you, length. You took it after it went back to the normal version. Yeah. Oh, then that was my second and one. And then, yeah, so I was just like working and studying. And honestly, like the gap year was nice because it was a time in my life where I could finally like say yes when I actually wanted to. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Cause like yeah. before I was like, Oh no, like I have to study or like I have work or I have stuff I have to do. But like when I was working like four twelves in a row at night, I'd just be like, Oh yeah, we can hang out. But like it has to be after 5 PM. Cause like that's when I wake up. Right. And the people like my friends were like, what does that mean? I was like, oh, I work night shift. Um, but I remember like studying and applying at some point kind of got a little monotonous yeah because i would just like wake up go oh, to work dude it was come home so hard to stay motivated sleep a couple hours wake up at like i don't know one if it was like my day like my last set of like three or whatever then i'd study and then i'd like try to flip my sleep schedule again and then have like a normal sleep schedule for like three days so i could study all day mm-hmm. and then stay up late so i could sleep in and then get up and get ready for work at five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I just remember that during the, at least for me, during the application process, I felt like it was, they, no, I didn't really feel like I was taken serious or cared about as an applicant. Mm-hmm. Because like you, I same thing as Alina, I still have an Excel sheet and I have all the schools I applied to, the date that I submitted my primary the date that I got a secondary back, if I got one, and then the day I submitted my secondary, and then if I got an interview, but Mm -hmm. this is the only one I got an interview, so. Yeah. And then I have a breakdown of like all the costs, and I still have Mm -hmm. like a, essentially. I did that. A ledger. (laughs) That was the only thing I did. Essentially a (laughs) ledger of how much I had spent between um, like UWorld studying, MCAT 
registration. Oh, you fees. put all that stuff on there too. Um, yes, and like Casper. primaries, secondaries, Casper. Oh, all Casper! That oh fucking my bullshit. god, dude, I forgot about Casper. Um, but the reason I say that is because they're like, oh, like you have to get your applications in online or in early, like early uh, is on time or whatever, because they're like rolling applications and blah blah blah. Like you got to make sure it's like, like everything's all professional and like. You submit it, you pay the fee, right? And you send a secondary. And then, like, the next day, the school will send you, at least for me, like, I submitted a secondary and the next day got a rejection. Yeah. They have their, or, their auto rejections. They're, they're, yeah. They were going to reject you anyway. Or they you just, just they, don't hear back at all. That's what I was going to say. Or yeah, that's the, they'll oh, that's email the you, like, three weeks later and they're like, it's like, oh, blah, 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 School of Medicine application status. You're like, oh, holy shit. Like, is this it? Like, am I going to get an interview? And you open It's like, dear applicant. We would just like to inform you that your application is still pending and under review. I'm like, what the f does that mean? I'm like, is that just like a delayed no? Because if it is, just be straight up. So I feel yeah. like that, and I still have yet to receive. Oh yeah. Um, emails from schools telling me that I was de denied oh, from my secondary. Yeah. Straight up. Like it literally, I just got ghosted. Yeah. Med schools are no. great at ghosting. Oh you. no, it's dude, and I still get emails from. From other Certain, schools. So, no, about like other programs. Other like, programs oh, but there's this yeah. master's program, so you should apply to that. Yeah. yeah I, one of the schools in Phoenix I applied to submitted my secondary. I had a really good feeling about it. I was like, one, I'm in state from Arizona. I went to Arizona for college. So I was like, eh, my grades are, you know, not terrible. I'm pretty, pretty good applicant. Submit my secondary. Next day, rejection. Two days later. You should apply for our pharmacy program, and I was like, "Yeah, F you." Like, what do they really That's think? That's so that, pity. I was like, "Let me just really switch think, my entire yeah. life." Is the, do they? Do they? Do they? Does that work? Do they? Do they? Yeah, it works for people. Like, how? Why would someone just be like, "Oh, well, I just didn't get into this one school. I'm just gonna switch my entire career path to pharmacy now." Because I yeah. think some people just want to be in the healthcare system, and they don't care how. I guess they yeah. do it. I don't know. It it just never made any sense to me. But my my but, so yeah oh. for me, I just felt like it was just you're just another number like during your application oh, of cycle. course yeah until you actually like get your student id at your school like they don't they don't give a shit about you yeah honestly those both sound so tame i got during my application cycle because <laughs> listen to this this was this is why i say it was the worst time of my life because uh after it was the like around January time of my junior year when I was planning mm -hmm. on taking the MCAT, mm -hmm. which is like around when you normally take it, like you take it like midway through your junior year. Right. That's like the normal, the normal time you're supposed to take it when, if you're just in undergrad. So yeah. Well, like just it, finish it doesn't really matter, but no. that's around the time. So everyone's studying for it. I was studying for it. I didn't feel ready. So I decided to push it. Right. I pushed it to, and this is 2019, right? I pushed it to like April 2019. Oh, I wonder what mm. happened then. Mm. So I was studying, studying, studying. I was one week away from my MCAT and COVID hit and they canceled it. So I was like, well, all I had been studying since September of that, of the year before, because usually you study for a little while. So at that point I was like, all right, well, let's see when I can reschedule it. So I started saying, they're like, well, we actually don't know when we're going to offer the next MCATs. So I was like, well, that, that f sucks. So then I, f I remember I would check every single day waiting for them to put the dates up because they kept saying like, oh, we're going to be putting them out soon. We have to focus on like logistics and stuff. So then they put some dates out and it was like, it was like, what was that around? Like, it was like June-ish of that, of 2019. And so I was like, all right, bet. Like signed up for a date in June, like two weeks before the exam. Oh, that MCAT's canceled. <laughs> so I was like, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> So then I rescheduled it again. I scheduled it for September in of the at the end of 2019. And at this point they had done like the Wait, you mean 2020? Or 2020. Sorry, COVID sorry. didn't show up till December of 19. That's what it was. No. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, it was it was yeah. but it was the no, when it got to it was March 2020 when it got to America. Yes. That's what it I meant. Not March, 2019, so 2020. Was my spring break. I get all the years mixed yeah, up. That was my junior we year. Went on, I feel like I always I've yeah. yeah, I left for spring break and I never came back. It was 2020. Yeah. Anyway, so then I did I came it back for, for four days. <laughs> I did it. Oh yeah, that was crazy too. <laughs> we'll talk about that. But I then I rescheduled again for September of 2020. Um, 
got canceled a third time. So this was three times in a row my MCAT got canceled and I'm studying like on and off because I kept losing motivation because I'm like, oh. Yeah. Like, this like, I don't have an MCAT there's scheduled. No, there's I finally no goal. There's yeah. no like yeah. I'd finally get one scheduled. I'd start studying again. Then it would get canceled like two, three weeks before. And I, at one point, just lost all motivation. And then finally, my senior year starts. So now we're in 2021 and we're still like full-blown COVID. And I schedule it for like, it was like, I don't even remember when. It was like the beginning of my senior year. And I was like, okay, screw it. Like, I have to take it this time. And it actually went through. But at that point, I'd been so on and off from studying that I hadn't studied for longer than maybe like a month and a half straight without stopping for at least like a week, two weeks. Because I just like, I couldn't motivate myself to keep going. Right. And so by the time I took it, I was not ready for it at all. Right. And, I, and I, I'm always, I've, I've been very like, I'll just, I fully disclose my score. I really don't care. I got a 503. Right, it's like very, like very, just like five hundred is considered average. Mm-hmm. But in, in the case of like the people who get into medical school or like the the normal like ex- accepted student, it's not considered average. But whatever. And I took the I shortened don't. one. Yeah. So all of that, it was just everything. It just felt like it was stacked against me. I ended up doing whatever. I said, screw it. I'm just gonna try applying because I did not think I was gonna get in this cycle. I said, I'm just gonna try applying. Why not? You know, maybe it works. If it doesn't work, I'll just retake the MCAT again. If it does, then you know, good for that. So I, so I apply and I, I'm on time with my applications. I think I was complete, like fully complete by like mid August, right? Like all of my secondaries, everything, mm-hmm. which is like around the time you're supposed mm-hmm. to be fully complete by. And I did not hear back from a single school besides that auto rejection I got <laughs> till March of 2022. So from Damn, August of 2021 to March of 2022, I didn't hear a single <laughs> word from any of these oh, schools. Yikes. Not and even secondaries? No, no, this oh, is no, after sorry, secondary. Yeah, you said so nothing. Secondary. Not a single thing. Ugh. And it was, it was horrible because I was working, right? I was, I was, we were, uh, hell yeah. yeah. Shout out all the ophthalmic, ophthalmic techs. Ophthalmic techs out there. Uh, honestly, made that year like more fun because if I, I wasn't doing anything, like it would have been so ass. But I was doing that. And then just every single day, you know, I check my email, refresh it in the morning, refresh it after lunch, refresh it <laughs> right before I go to bed. No emails. Um, and then I'm like, at one point I was like, I should probably start studying for my MCAT again. I don't think I'm going to get it because <laughs> in this point it's like January, like my birthday had happened, like everything, like it just like the world was happening and my applications weren't being moved. I would like check the status. It would just say in progress mm-hmm. always. So I start studying for my MCAT again. I'm studying and studying. And then I realized I don't have enough time like to work and study. So I quit my job. I put my two weeks in, quit my job, started full time studying for the MCAT. And then a month after that. I finally, well, actually, I technically got my interview when I was working still, mm-hmm. but I did my interview and then also waited like they, like seven weeks after my interviews when I heard back from them. Oh, yeah, it was horrible. Seven it was just, weeks? It, yeah, it was like almost Dang. two months. So at that oh, point, like I was convinced brother. that it was just over. So I was like, I need to reapply. I started studying for my MCAT again, quit my job, it was full-time studying. And then I was, one day, I, I and the crazy thing is the, the day I got accepted, I was like, I, I, hit, I hit an all-time low. Like I I'd woken up super late. And I didn't study and I was just like feeling like shit. And I like was just laying on this on my couch in my apartment by myself, just like F- my life, dude. And then I go to take a shit. And while I'm taking a shit, I get an email. <laughs> that's that how says, you got congratulations. Your, that's how you got your acceptance was on the toilet. I was taking a shit when I got my acceptance. This is classic so Chad. For you. It this came is classic. At, like I could not have I could not think of a better time for that acceptance to come. Like I was literally at rock bottom in terms of like my mental status. I was like, I just can't do this anymore. I had no motivation to do anything. And I was just taking a shit and I got my acceptance. And I literally, I didn't even like scream or anything. I saw the email and I just was like, thank God. And then proceeded to like call my parents and stuff. But it was, it was mentally like one of the worst years in my entire life. Like, Actually, honestly, two years because I did a year of studying for my MCAT and then right. a year of applying. So it was horrible. The real question is, was that the greatest shit that you've ever taken? Oh, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> that wipe after two, <laughs> A1. It just like, you know, it just felt good. But yeah, so that was, that's why I, I talk so badly about that part of my life. Cause it just, everything was like, it seemed like everything was just going wrong for me mm-hmm. in reality. Like, you know, it was just life happening, but it just, it just, I never had things like draw, like draw out for that long. Mm-hmm. And I just felt like I was in limbo. Like I had no purpose. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's I'm just working part. this rant. Like I'm just working I'm in the medical field, but I'm a medical assistant and not to say there's anything wrong, but like, I want to be a doctor. And so nothing's happening with that. 
like I can't motivate myself to study. So I just come home, play video games after I'm done with work and then just repeat for like a year straight. I literally just felt like I was in limbo and then everything. And then now I like, you know, that's why I'm like so into this now. It's cause it's like, I, like, I feel like we have a purpose, like a path, you know, yeah. like a path set out in front of us that we can follow. There's a goal. There's a goal that like an actual tangible goal that I can see in the future. So, so I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. How did you just have to pay once or did they charge you a rescheduling fee? For the MCAT? Mm-hmm. No, they, they refunded for the ones they canceled because it was yeah. there. They canceled them. Yeah. I got Did canceled you, on twice too. Yeah. And they, got refunded. they, they refunded for those. Mm-hmm. But, um, cause there's like a window where you can cancel it. Like, right. There's like the gold window and the bronze nice. window and all that bullshit. But one time Money I, the, the one time I did cancel and I, I regret canceling that because I thought I was just pushing it for a few months so I could study some more. In reality, I ended up taking like a year longer. I had, I canceled it before like the gold window hit, so I ended up getting a full refund for mm. it. So I never had to pay for mm, multiple, for and one. I only took it once. I didn't take it again. I was planning on taking it again. Luckily, I didn't have to because it was the worst thing ever. But you know, it ended up working out. So I guess I can't complain too much. I hold zero weight on the MCAT, and I know I, agree. I know so many people will. What do you mean? fight me to the death over that like what do you mean oh i think the mcat's bullshit oh yeah because it's just a formality yeah i am will always be a proponent that standardized tests are but can i to a certain extent bogus can i play devil's advocate for bogus Bogus, i tell you no no come on because (laughs) like my entire life even through like high school and college like i have been a very average standardized test taker same but like in my classes i'm yeah me too significantly above average mm-hmm. but and then i'm like it's so disheartening because you take this like standardized test it's like how much do you know and you take it and it's like you're fine and i'm like well, no. yeah but yeah. everything else that i've been all, doing all standardized tests they're 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 just aptitude tests yeah they some exist, people know how to play the game no, they, some they exist for the purpose of the people who accept you to like college and prof- like grad school, and they're just too lazy to look super deep into every single applicant. It's the most convenient way to vet the abundant the abundance of applicants that they get. Like you know, true. if you got like a ten thousand applicants for your school, you're not going to look at each single applicant. First, you just vet That's them true. by very very objective metrics, and then and you know maybe you will miss some people who would be great students but it's just like maybe their mcat was too low or their gpa was too low but it's like it's just it would be too hard it would take too long that that's why i get it i also agree with you but i get no, it. i no, understand I, get it. I understand like that's why i'm like it's just a formality it's a thing. formality yeah but you know what's crazy though? it mm. i feel like it just adds way too much stress it does it i does. agree especially you know like the prep for i'm sorry no, you're but fine. like Oh, you have to buy the book, so you have to get the subscription. Oh, all that stuff is yeah. bullshit. All that you know, stuff. you know, I studied. I, I studied. Have a bone to pick I got about one that. book for my SAT when I was in high school. I bought a singular book, studied for like maybe two weeks for it, and took it and was fine. And people were spending thousands of dollars. Okay, you know, good for them. Honestly, I'm not gonna like shit yeah. on them for paying for those classes, but and it was usually their parents who paid for them. But like, I could not justify to my parents to make them spend like a thousand dollars on like a two months long SAT course just for me to get into undergrad, like. I don't know. But anyway, you know what's gonna, crazy though what? is that the person who created the SAT, this was like way back in the day. Mm-hmm. They created it to try oh. and prove that a certain race was more intelligent than the no other. No way. That's why it was created. What yeah, the? they they made it so that they could objectively prove that white people were smarter than other races. Right. This Correct. is like what back in like no, the, wait, you're, God you, knows what thirties or something. Say Walla. I, I, Walla. Walla. I'm gonna look this up here. No, it's no. Crazy. There's there's like reports the, on. It. Oh yeah. my god. Like yeah. honestly, just, that makes so much sense. Yeah. No, that makes so much no, it's sense. So BS. Yeah. Wow. Because it's just a matter of who has the resources. Yeah. Honestly, like that's one of the things that it mm-hmm. boils down to. It makes to it, it a lot resources. easier. That's why those courses work. Right. Because they they literally tell you what to do. They're just like this, yeah, exactly. It's just a it's it's learning the game. Yeah. And like they like the way that you studied for like the SAT wasn't learning the information. It was like if you get a question like this, here's the trick. It was to learning answer. how to take here the was, test. It was, yeah, exactly. You learn how to, is, 
Well, so that's why I'm saying like like yes. the the argument for why the cars section exists on the MCAT, right? Because everyone, if if if, uh, if someone outside of the like the medical field or even med, med students will look at the MCAT, and be like, why the f was there a reading comprehension section on the MCAT? Like it's supposed to be a science based test, but do we have to do reading comprehension on like every every lecture we get? Like yeah, no, it, I mean I'm saying so it, it you, you, you can make an day. argument for it. You know, yeah. Like it should be something, a skill that you shouldn't, you should have. Now, okay. Granted, some of the passages they choose are so f-ing boring, like about like oh, random. I almost like, fell asleep during the first time I took it. During yeah, the first like, section, I was could, like, they could maybe choose some better <laughs> passages. <laughs> but they I love get Greek it. mythology. They love that and like, like old European stuff. Yeah. Also, it's very white. The- <laughs> That's true. The thing that <laughs> sticks out to me about like the car section oh, that like, I tribes remember, and shit. They always talk about like different tribes, like this. You know. Okay, sorry, but yeah, no, you're good. Um, the when I was like studying for the car section, I remember like the practice uh, um, passages. They would be. It would be like uh, uh, somebody wrote. Like a critique, like a, yeah. like a critic, oh, yeah. like a critic the critiques, wrote, yeah. A critic would write a, their critique on like a, a play or whatever, and then you would read and the then, cr- and then no, and then somebody, oh, yeah. somebody would edit the critique yeah. and like essentially that was like <laughs> their, a response to the that critique. was their yeah. their reply tweet, if you will, yeah. And then somebody else quoted the reply tweet, and it was like these three layers, like three different authors, and it was like blah 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 which of the following statements would the author most likely agree with i'm like which one <laughs> the original the critic or the sub the, the sub tweet Dude, like which the one person is writing the article about the three authors i'm like w-. yeah those it was odds. just so like he said she said blah 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 and i was like you are just so ass backwards in this question that I don't even think you know the answer to it. But I will say that I will say that while the majority of the cards passages that I like used to practice and the ones that I had on my MCAT were boring, there were some cool passages. There were, and there was one passage that I had on my on my MCAT um, that I will not forget. And I actually looked up some stuff after it. It was about this, like, like some old philosopher who initially brought up the idea of like similes, like mm. in terms of like everything in life being like a simile, really. Like basically saying like, oh, you know, we may, or what was it? I think it was. So he, he invented the word like? Pretty much. Yeah. Because Hell he was yeah. like, he was like, you look at like, like, let's, we look at the human race. Maybe to us dancing is considered fun. That's the relation that we make to it. But like, I don't know, maybe there's some alien race out there that dancing is like a form of battle or something that they do. Like it, it, nothing has Dance a battle. Well, yeah, that, <laughs> but like it, it's like a war, like actual war. And that's how they fight. Or, he was just bringing up hypotheticals and he was talking about how like um, it's everything is so subjective. Nothing has like a dis, like a, a objective meaning. Like nothing really has an objective meaning. And I remember reading that during my MCAT and he mind cars is like the third section, I think. Right. Mm-hmm. And at that point, like, I'm already dead. But I was reading it, and it, like, gave me, like, a little burst of energy there. Because I was like, oh, my God, that's fucking sick. <laughs> and I Googled some stuff on it after it. But besides that, everything else was just ass. Yeah, 100%. I'm surprised that your parents didn't um, push, like, a prep course or something like that. Because they're immigrants, both of them, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, we, we wanted to like, talk about this, too. I feel like that's huge. Yeah, I think that... I think, And there's also... I, I think it'll be interesting, too, with having Jacob on here. Because yeah. even though... Your parents aren't necessarily immigrants. You are a first-generation medical student. And college student. And college student. And for me, I'm a first-generation medical student. I'm uh, not. And then Alina isn't, but has a singular immigrant parent. So yeah. It's a, a wide variety. You have, like, two experience. immigrant parents. I have one. He's generation. He's I'm true general, first gen. True, true first gen. In terms of immigrants. I'm 1.5. Jacob's, like, probably, like, 85. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> but I will say that I... <laughs> Sorry, I'm dying. <laughs> pause for me dying. <coughs> All right, we'll pause for a second. Okay. Better now? Yeah. Okay. You know we're just going to put the, the coughing clip over any time somebody swears. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're <laughs> I hope the, you know that. That's what we're going to do now. Is so, my sicky germs. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, so I never really asked them about that in terms of why they didn't push. Like, like they, they never pushed any career on me, really. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I was never, ever persuaded into doing medicine they didn't didn't bring it up they were just like do like as long as you do something that is respectable Mm -hmm. 
then like we're cool with it right Right. like my brother for example he's he's doing he's doing biomedical engineering because my dad's an engineer my mom's a college professor um and yeah they never pushed any of that stuff on me they really let me choose and i was the one who like what would wanted to do medicine and it started because Mm -hmm. i was a big soccer fan well i still am but i like when i was younger i used to like uh i used to tell my dad i was like i want to be the team doctor for Barcelona, and I want to travel uh-huh. with them around the country. Like, and I, he, I just br- randomly brought it up. He'll, he's told me this story. I just randomly brought it up one day, and he was like, "Oh, that's great!" <laughs> While all these kids, like in elementary, this was in like elementary school, all these kids are like, "I want to be an astronaut." Or, like, I want to be. A, yeah, I was like, "I want to be a veterinarian." I want to be an astronaut. I, I want to be a sports doctor for Barcelona. And I was <laughs> I like, "Why so president. specific?" Like, that's like really like oddly specific. Um, but, I want to be an ear, nose, and can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine like I want to be on an career ear day team. on career day? Like all the little like kindergartners are running around. It's like, oh, little Jimmy, what do you want to be? And he's like, I want to be an ear, nose, and throat doctor. And you're no, like, it's like, I want to be an interventional cardiologist. Like, <laughs> who, who told you that? It's like oh, I was watching. Where did you I, learn to speak like that? Uh, I was actually watching Crazy Anatomy with my mommy, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I saw my. Daddy Mark. <laughs> oh, brother. R.I.P. Um, um, sorry if that's a spoiler for anyone, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Who's uh mark shut up oh yeah you haven't seen it <laughs> <laughs> i refuse to watch it but anyway um we gotta get jacob on and and in terms of like the prep courses and that kind of stuff too they they never really pushed that i know they used to tell me they're like if you want like we'll pay for it like don't worry about it but i never really saw the point in it um like especially in high school and stuff like mm-hmm. a bunch of all my friends were doing like Right, the different SAT prep courses. There was this really popular, like local SAT prep course called, called Kabir, um, in Michigan, and I just bought like the the book, like one of the books I forgot, and I just did the book. That was all I did. Mm-hmm. I, it took me like two weeks, and then I took it. And then for the MCAT, it was the same way where I saw all my friends like getting the Kaplan courses, going to these classes and stuff, and I was like, that was a waste of money. Yeah, and I, and I looked at the price; and it was like fifteen hundred dollars or even more than. I was like, what the heck, like. No, I am not going to make my parents pay this money. Like I, I just self studied. Mm-hmm. It's not like it, like I did well or anything, but I did, I did well enough. So and they saved money on that front at least. But yeah, I don't know. They, they even though I think they're, since they're both immigrants, like you, you know, the stereotype is they're going to be like super strict and stuff. But I'm not sure exactly where in their lives they became not like that. I think it's also a little bit with their parents as well, because mm. like my my grandparents are also really chill. But it's nice. Because it, it, it took a lot of the pressure off and allowed me more freedom to like choose what I wanted to do and it felt more like it was my decision. Like I never I've never felt forced into this. That's why I like I like I enjoy it so much because I'm actually doing what I wanted to do. Yeah. But I about- wouldn't say I feel forced, mm-hmm. but I feel like because a lot of my family members are physicians, it's just like been something I've been around a lot. Mm-hmm. So then my parents are always like, well, why not? Because both of them are physicians too. So they're like, well, like this is like a really respectful career. And like, it's like you're in the field of like helping people. Right. Yeah. Et cetera, I mean, et cetera. Talking so, about it like that, there's nothing really yeah, wrong Yeah. There's with nothing it. wrong with it. But like, there was always kind of like a tinge of like, because they would tell me like, as long as you're a professional, it doesn't matter what you do. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like there was a tinge of, but medicine was like a really good option like, like, for oh, that. Mm, maybe, maybe. Yeah. But you should. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like. You don't have to, but like. Yeah. Yeah. You should. Like I did go through a little period of time where I was like, do I really want to do medicine? This was like in high school because I really like writing. So I was like, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do something in like journalism. And then I was like, um, never mind. Writing is more of a hobby. I don't want to make that a career because I would actually cry every day. And then I was like, okay let's let's explore this medicine option a little more and here we are and here we are what about you Yakub? um i think mine was pretty (laughs) similar to yours so like nobody like the only person that's gone to college well like when i was in high school the only person that had been to college in my family was like my older cousin and like obviously like now my younger cousin is in college um so like yeah, when I was like in high school, like my parents were like they they were never like, "Oh, like this is what we want you to do or like what you should do." And which is like now thinking about it, like could have gone completely the different way because like my dad has his own business and like he could have been from like day 1, he could have been like, 
you are going to take over the family business like at some point, like after you graduate high school, you're going to come work for me and blah, blah, blah. And like, we'll just keep it a family business. Like he totally could have done that, but like there was never ever any persuasion to be like, Oh Jake, are you like, you know, like, you know, I'm going to retire in 20 years. Are you mm-hmm. thinking about taking yeah. over the family business? No, none of that. And like same thing about my mom. She was like, yeah, like you can work in like the loan finance industry if you want, but like, it's whatever. And I was like, okay. Um, and I guess like the, the, I, I guess like the closest influence that I had in like a, like a, a relationship, like a family friend was one of them that was a nurse practitioner. So like, she would just like, I was like the only person that would like really ask like, Oh, like what did you see today? Or like blah, 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 blah. Like ask her all these questions. And then, I took uh like metal shop and welding in high school for two years. Hell yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, this is fun. And like, yeah, it's cool. You get to do cool shit. You get to like weld and we do all these projects and stuff. <laughs> you get to like <laughs> weld. Yeah. And metal and shit. I actually like have that, that uh, handicap cutout sign that I have oh, yeah. in my apartment. Oh, I made that. You made that? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, Do you have one that says your last name on it too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just welded it on there. It's better than my actual handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> but did um, you have like a stencil? No, you just got there with the, the uh, welder. You freehand it? Yeah, just. Impressive. Um, Impressive. And then I was like, it was kind of like the classic, like, oh, you are you have good grades in high school. You should go to college. And I was like, yeah. So then I like kind of took the two. I was like, well, I kind of like work with my hands and building stuff, but I like want to help people. And if admissions just sees what I said, they're going to kick me out because that's such a <laughs> lame answer to give on your interview. <laughs> yeah. But then I was like, oh, I really like science. Like, I'm good at it. So I was like, how do I put all of those together? And then I was like, mom and dad, like, I'm going to go to college and do like bio or whatever. And then I'm going to go to med school. And they're like, oh, okay. And they were like, yeah, we've never been to college. We've never been to medical school we don't have any family members to ask. And like my cousin at the time, I think she was like a junior when I was a senior in high school or something like that. And she was just like, Oh, like, yeah, here's kind of how like college applications works. And so like through college applications and like med school applications and everything like that, they like, they're like, Oh, like, Oh, can we pay for you? Like your MCAT or whatever. I was like, no, like I'm working. Like it's, it's thank you. But like, I'm good and like prep course and stuff like didn't do any of those. I just like bought a couple books and studied off of those. Um, but you meant SAT. Oh, dude, I just raw dogged it. I was just like, <laughs> okay, yeah, he did. Took like a, <laughs> took like a SAT he book. He, he didn't notice. What you, you you were talking about? You said MCAT. You're like, oh yeah, I took my MCAT to get into undergrad. <laughs> oh yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm just rambling at this point, but like MCAT, <laughs> SAT, all that yeah, stuff, yeah. right? I just like got the book, studied. I was like, sorry, I okay, myself. this is good, whatever. Yeah. But they're never, they weren't like, I feel like my parents were supportive in such a different way because they were just like, they didn't, oh they yeah, didn't, we're so like, proud of you, Jake. Like, we love you. We believe in you. You can do anything you want. And I was like, I know that's means a lot, but like, I don't know what I'm doing. So and, and it's hard. You it's know, already you hard like enough. And they're just yeah. like, I'm like, I just need someone to like, at least tell me I'm doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. But I mean, in the end it worked out. My dad's like, like I was talking to my dad earlier. He's like, Oh, like what, what system are you in now? So go, we're in GI. He goes, you know what that means? I'm like, yeah, gastrointestinal. He goes, Nope. That means gateway to the intestines. <laughs> and he just like says like, this is like classic, just like dad shit. Yeah. And they're just like, we don't know what you're going through. Like, we've never had to study that like that. And like, obviously, we we don't really know what you're going through. But they're like, if you need anything, just let us know. Which is very, very shorthand for just like, we're proud of you. You can do it. Like, but they also trust you too. No, yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. And then like, same thing, I talked to my grandparents and they're just like, okay, well, if you need um, groceries, I'll send you a Walmart gift card so you can buy eggs. I'm like, okay. Not eggs. I'm like, yeah, okay, okay. Hey, those are a hot commodity these days. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But no, I mean, that's kind of. How well, I mean, I, I, I think do. I think in, in in my experience it was a little similar because since my parents immigrated, like they didn't 
I mean, they did go to college here, but they... But it's different. But the, the way that they got into college was through, like, the whole immigration. Like, they came on, like, a... Student visa? They came... Well, they, there was, like, this program in Lebanon that they came to America through. And the whole idea oh, was to, like, send, send people from Lebanon to America to get educated and then come back, make Lebanon better. But they just went to America and stayed <laughs> there. They said, they said that, I'm not coming back. Honestly, they were like, this is like when Lebanon was like in the middle of yeah. one of their many wars. But yeah, so they went and it's like through the program, they really knew where they, they were going. They went to University of Toledo. They were they were, knew they were going there. So they didn't mm. like have to go through the whole application process. Mm-hmm. And then um, like my mom has a PhD and my my dad has a master's, so they did do grad school. But mm-hmm. in terms of like med school, it's the same way. Where well, my like my parents will call me and they'll ask me like, "Do you need anything?" Stuff like that. And I I always I'm like, if I do need something, it wouldn't necessarily be school based because I know mm-hmm. that they can't really help. And I don't I don't mind. Like well, I'm not yeah, expecting dad, can you yeah. to. Can you walk me through the pharmacology of like yeah anti medics? But like, what makes it nice is what? they're so interested in all this stuff. Sometimes I'll just call my mom and start just explaining what we're learning, and it'll kind of like be me studying. Mm-hmm. Like I'll just call her or when I was at home for spring break or not spring break, winter break, I practiced like OMM and mm-hmm. I did and yeah. I did some of that stuff. And I, I brought like too. my Seth's go back and practice stuff for PCP. Like I just practiced stuff that I could on them because my, cause my mom was like, why not? Like if this helps, of course. Yeah. And my so, dad pimps me on yeah. the phone. Yeah. Jag got a recent dose of the yeah, pimping. He, he pimped me on uh, what renal stuff. Yeah. I'm surprised. He, he remembers wrote. things from like. 35 years it's ago crazy because the way it Very works is in, in india he was explaining it to him they will memorize the textbook because they have written exams like Ooh, you they will give you like four question stems and you have to write all the biochem all the whatever related to that it's just straight recall it's not even like questions and you have to answer like based on that one question it's just like <clears throat> they're saying like it's just like it's like Talk about this subject, and then just yeah. you have to just write everything, everything. about that. Tell me about calcium reabsorption, and just go through the <laughs> like. Imagine like crazy. a question on our exam being like, explain the entire urea cycle from start to finish. Like, it, I mean, I said, yeah. okay, even the urea cycle is not like it's not that urea long. Urea cycle's not bad, but you get the example. Yeah. yeah. So, but so that's why I mean that's why I'm so impressed because I know well, that at this point, like my uncle, my the my uncle, or no, sorry. Technic like would, would, so my second cousin's a doctor right so I guess it's like not technically well in, like in my immediate family I'm the first edition but my second cousin and he's like Excuse me. he's my cousin but he's like forty something and at this point you know he doesn't know like he doesn't remember more than half the shit he learned in med school and then like not to dog on any of the clinical faculty that come but like they're obviously in their specialties and so a lot of times if we have questions about stuff that they maybe haven't heard of in a very long time they also won't know so it's impressive that your dad actually remembered all that stuff because it's really easy to like hyper fixate yeah. um but he's an internist right he's a pediatrician or a pediatrician yeah. and i think that's just something that that um one of our clinical faculty faculty was talking to me about i was i was talking to them after a pcp one day and they were mentioning how really like peds internal and Honestly, really, like, peds and internal are the two specialties where you're kind of forced to use yeah. most of the shit you learn in med school. And you can't, you just, you physically can't just fixate on a specialty. Like, you have mm-hmm. to remember everything yeah. because it all applies. Like, and she was, even, oh, yeah, she was saying that even, like, nephrology, like, as a nephrologist, you're not just dealing with kidneys all day. Like, oh, you're, yeah. you're really just an internist and you with your specialty in nephrology. But, like, if you were to be a cardiologist, you're only dealing with, with heart problems. Or like like the heart, right? It's it's way more focused, and because of that, you really have to retain so much more. And so it's it's it's, it's pretty impressive. And I think I think a lot of people don't put enough, give it enough um, praise for how much you have to know to, and even like family med too. Yeah, you gotta know Fair. everything. You should know freaking everything. It's insane. It is crazy. But yeah, oh, I think it'd be interesting to, for you to tell us about um, some of the specialties that you're interested in. Hmm. I know that we were, well. So now, oh, what do you mean now? It, 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 <laughs> it, it changes. No, it's still the same of what you think oh, okay, it okay. is. But growing up, or like when I first got interested or whatever, I really wanted to do plastics. Oh, <laughs> really wanted to do plastics, but reconstructive plastics because That's what everyone says. Oh, we've had no, this wait. conversation. 
Side note, that's what every single person who says they want to do plastic says. Not to, not to shit on you, but like if you ask anyone who says, I want to do plastics, they're going to say, no, but it's for the reconstructive plastics. Like, I don't want to do just like the... The, um, the tummy tucks the tummy and the tuck nose stuff. jobs. No, I want to help people like burn victims and stuff. But then what happens is you go into plastics and you realize that while the reconstructive stuff is cool, you're going to make most of your money doing... Yeah, you got to do both. Doing Aesthetic. both. And then you end up just doing that. And like, the, the, and not to say that there yeah. aren't like really good plastic surgeons out there, but at least everyone that I've talked to who's been interested in plastics is always said that i think it's so well i would want it if back in the day (laughs) when i wanted to do it now it's not really a thing that i want to do that much anymore but i wanted to do reconstructive for like breast cancer patients because a lot Mm -hmm. of my family suffered from breast cancer so um that part for me was like what hit home but I no longer want to really do that because I don't think it's a viable option, to be quite honest. You don't know that. But you could, what about OB? Don't they sell yourself do short. Right? Huh? Oh, I mean, you don't have to go into plastics to do, like, reconstructive surgery for, uh, I mean, I guess you could, you might have to. But a lot of times, like, just the OBs will do all that, like, after they do the, like, the tumor removals or stuff or, like. As well, given, general surgeons can do or even the general surgeons yeah can mastectomies do, well yeah i'm saying but like if you right. were to do something like ob you could like maybe get further specialized in like the reconstructive yeah. portion of it after and then kind of like do that if but you either still way want to do that yeah either way and then i worked in ophthalmology office Hell for yeah. gap year and i Hell still yeah. really like that that's like a definite contender still Opto's cool but then we did uh cardio <laughs> and now i'm like do i want to do interventional cardio Cardio is a lot of fun. Really? Yeah. And then I, I also... the first time you brought that up. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, she's brought it up before. Uh, uh, maybe not around me, because mm-hmm. I talk about interventional cardiology from time to time. Hell so yeah. We'll hey, I was talking about it too. Okay. <laughs> but I think we all just loved the cardio block so much. I loved cardio. I mean, it was a cardio great block. cool. It was a fun block. Cardio. I like cardio. I also went home and like picked my uncle's brain about because he's an interventional radiologist mm. and yeah. i thought i was gonna do like we were gonna do these like radiology seminars whatever that we do and i thought i was gonna absolutely hate my life you like but it. i actually thought it was interesting oh i did too yeah. so then i picked his brain about interventional because i couldn't sit in a room all day and just look at scans i would that i would hate mm-hmm. but that's fair i don't know it's kind of a Eh, option for me because i'm like if i do it i would only want to do interventional yeah. there's no guarantee for that and so. if you can do a lot of cool stuff with interventional oh, yeah yeah he do pulled a out a lot of cool stuff he showed me a picture of this tumor he pulled out or no it wasn't a tumor it was a it was a pe it was this big I oh kid God. you not, it was six inches. Oh my God. He put it on the table with the, with the, with the ruler, he, with the tape measure? Not even with a ruler, but it was like a chart thing. I don't even know how to explain like a it. grid? Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> Interesting. It was insane. No, I think, that's, I think that stuff is pretty cool. I, I'd say that um, I'm holding off. I, I, I've realized that it's nice to talk about all the specialties that I'm interested in, but um, like I'm, I'm holding off making any firm decisions in my mind because oh, so i know still i know early. that mm-hmm. as much as i'll objectively like the information of a certain specialty it's really going to come down to the experience we have during rotation like yeah. having a shit attending for like your surgery rotation might kill surgery for you and it's just it'll, you'll just lose interest because you're like that was just a horrible experience yeah or a lot of times like you may have an amazing experience in a specialty that you never thought about because mm-hmm. the attending was just so cool and so a lot, a lot of times, that's the reason why people end up choosing their specialties. That, um, at least that's what I've heard, yeah. um, obviously. And so I'm kind of like keep. I want to make sure I don't make like by mistakely make any decisions in my brain yeah. that force me away from certain things. But I agree. At least like still gives have interests. But I know it's like I gotta keep myself in check because mm-hmm. i'll get latched on i know i will like i'll get latched on to a certain like, special yeah, you, you fix the it. Sign. i'll you fix, fix it. it i'll fix it like how you got fixated on the sign yeah <laughs> no but so that's why i gotta like i gotta keep myself in check. and how he's fixated on chess right now oh dude hell yeah shout out anyone who plays chess um, i'm i appreciate you know i'm it's hard he's trying to be a part of your squad i'm just trying to be, get better honestly but anyway yeah, I remember like in high school, I was like dead set on be- doing ortho, and then I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. it's definitely changed throughout the years. Um, and then after working in telemetry, I'm like, eh, cardio is pretty cool. And then we took cardio, and I was like, yeah, cardio is pretty cool. 
But like you were saying, it kind of comes down to like rotation. Like you could be like, oh, like, you know, like this, this is the subject is so interesting. Like these cases are so interesting, but what does the work life balance look like? Like, are you going to only be at work? Like if you want to have a family or travel or do X, Y, Z, one, two, three, whatever, you know what I mean? Like those are, those are other things that have to be taken into consideration when you're choosing a specialty. Oh yeah. And also can- like people always ask, I feel like I've already said this on the podcast, but people are always like, why should I choose this specialty? Oh, because X, Y, Z, but nobody or not enough people ask or don't think to ask, why should I not choose? Oh, this yeah. that's the main question you should ask. Always. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like these cases were really cool. Like this was a really interesting day. Like it was, you know, a hundred miles an hour all day. It was crazy. <clears throat> but why should I not choose? Exactly. Whatever specialty? You need to be able to, I, there was this med student on TikTok who put it in a way that I think, is like very easy to digest. He was just like, if you, let's say you're interested in surgery and you thought surgery was the coolest f-ing thing in the entire world, but it was 2 a.m. and you're doing the same surgery you've done a thousand times. Like, are you going to be enjoying it then? Because if not, and if are you gonna, if you're going to hate your life, then maybe no, surgery not, isn't for you. Not even that, doing, you know, your thousandth like emergency gallbladder removal. Like, yeah. Yeah. At that point, like it's just, like muscle memory it's a job right like you you know what to expect unless there's like some crazy complications no, but will, will you like no, dislike but, no. that yeah but the thing is are you gonna want to get up out of your nice warm bed at two o'clock in the morning drive 30 minutes to the hospital leave your spouse your dog and your kids at home and be back who the fuck knows when like, are you gonna want to do that mm-hmm. multiple times a week until you retire yeah you really have to cut your losses when you're doing that kind of stuff yeah like you have to you have to make the hard decisions like at least from like my cousin i was talking to you guys about my second cousin who he's a pain management physician out in north carolina he i was talking i talked to him on the phone yesterday or the other day for like two hours partly to asking about like research and stuff and the other just to kind of catch up and he was just giving me some advice and he was telling me like yeah i really wanted to do surgery he, he was like dead set on surgery all throughout medical school and obviously, he's kind of a surgeon now. Like, as a pain management physician, he gets to do, like, micro procedures. But he was telling me, like, that exact same stuff. He was like, I had an attending sit me down and just tell me, like, listen. Just gave me it raw. Like, this it not like that. This <laughs> is this is how ass being a surgeon can be. Right. He's like, I still enjoy it. But it takes a lot of effort on my part to, to make this, like, work. I, like, I could easily break if I didn't have, like, if I, if I didn't want to do this so badly. And like I, I've seen my colleagues break, and like I mean, we 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 hear all about like the stats of physicians have like the highest burnout rate, high super suicide high suicide rate. rates, like it's everything. So it's like you really have to like make the hard decision and say, I, even though you might love this, like, you know, be realistic. Is this gonna last? Because it is, it is in the end about like the long run, about lasting in the field and not just working for like I don't know, like five years and then just fucking quitting because you're just burnt out. So right, yeah. That's the harsh reality of it. But it can still be nice and flashy too, right? Which, I don't know if we should start this conversation after we've been on the pod for this long, but Mm -hmm. I... Okay, I'm going for it. No, let's do it. I I think... Honestly, that whole first part with Misu going crazy might have to triage that a little bit. So, let's do it. It just blows my mind that, like, physicians have, what, one of the highest, if not the highest, like suicide rates of any Mm -hmm. job or any occupation and i just find it so difficult to come to terms with that one it's so hard to even get a seat in medical school two it's so hard to even graduate and get a residency and then become an attending that like it never lets up that you're always literally under a microscope in a fishbowl, whatever, however you want to describe it. And you have so much responsibility and so just so many different pressures from so many different angles that like, that's what they just resort to. Like, and, and even can you still, imagine spending e- like your life, like you said, like in grade school and I said high school and like you said high school too, like you're like what, 14 years old 
at 14 years old, you made up your mind. And then like one day when you're like 40, you're just like, ah, this isn't worth it. And you just kill yourself. Like it's, what, it's, like, it's, what, it's just like, what did, I feel like that speaks. I don't know. It No, it speaks um, so much onto how like badly physicians are treated. Yeah. Because it's like, I would say that the majority of people, obviously there are a lot, there are some people who will go into medical school for the wrong reasons. Like I want to be a doctor because I just want to make a shit ton of money. It's like, you should never. Better do. ways oh, to make a shit ton so of money. So many better ways to make money than medicine. On the record, it is the worst way to make if money, you're honestly. going into medicine because you want to make $200,000 a year, bro, just. Be just, a finance bro. No, oh. just start taking computer science classes. No, literally. I, I'm yeah. going to save you so much time, money, and effort. Just please switch no, it's to not, It's not worth it at all. Anyone who ever says like, oh yeah, medicine for the money, it's the, it's that is the dumbest reason to do it because you are going to put yourself through hell just to make the same amount you could have made three, four years out of undergrad with a fucking yeah. computer science degree, like especially in this day and age. But even for the people who do genuinely want to do medicine, because I'd say most of the people who go into med school who actually make it this far eventually do want to do medicine. It's like a combination of, well, in, in, it, it boils down to just physicians are treated horribly. It's even after, like at the point that you would expect that when you go through all this schooling and you've become what people would consider a professional at medicine, that you would have some sort of respect. And not to say that all physicians are treated badly, but if you just look at the climate, like the distrust is at an all time high. Yeah. And it's and it, it, it it's like everything you did was just for nothing. And so it seems pointless to a lot of people because they're like, well, what the what was the point of going to school? What was the what are you laughing Your for? Your stomach going crazy right it now. It is going crazy. <laughs> Mike, hopefully the mic isn't picking that up. But no, it's it it's 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 horrible. And I I mean it's more of like a systemic problem. It's really hard to just kind of fix that with a snap. It's hard like to that. Yeah. It's but, hard to nail down one cause. But I mean, that's that's why. And then also the being overworked. It's just all a combination. It's not You're a, overworked and underappreciated. Yeah, but I feel like I think COVID changed it a lot, though. Made it worse. Um, I think it made it go to the extremes. Yeah, like I think people are it like, did. oh my god, heroes work here, and you're like, okay, that's a bit much. Mm -hmm. Um, but then there's also like the other end of the spectrum where they're like, fuck you, you don't know anything that you're talking about. Yeah, and I feel like part of the reason is and why there's like a distrust in like physicians and healthcare is like that old saying, like it only takes one rotten apple to ruin the bunch like it like it really only takes one person it's very white man of you. i know i was <laughs> trying to put some spice spice in it but it didn't work yeah because you're white man yeah well at least i'm cayenne white <laughs> those facts you are um babrika <laughs> <laughs> sorry um damn it you derailed me you said sorry. you're talking about yeah, apples so so <laughs> yeah Basically, uh, I prefer Granny Smiths. Anyways, <laughs> um, we'll have that conversation um, in just a moment here. Yeah, it only takes like one bad physician to like ruin, right? So like, there's a bad physician, right? There's a lawsuit, and then people catch wind of that, like it's all over the news, right? And then people are like, "Oh, f doctors, like they're all corrupt." But like, I don't think I'm a corrupt person. Yeah, but it it, it it doesn't. I mean, but then sadly, also, it's not how it works. I know, but yeah. then there's also. I also think about it, and it, like going back to what I was saying about my parents earlier. Like, if you're truly not in medical school, like like even when you're an undergrad and you're applying to medical school, you're like, oh, I think I know how it works. No, you don't. And then day no. one, you sit your ass no, you in don't. the seat in class, and you're like, you don't get it. This is an absolute wild roller coaster not, and yeah. i think because of that like there's just like this weird mist fog like shield around like medicine and medical school it and seems, how it all it works it seems like elitist that yeah and then if you if you're just not a physician or not in medical school you you have no idea how it works and like as like the attendings are coming in and they're like they're just like doing their job and seeing patients and right and like taking care of people like they just get used to it and they get in the groove and then people are just like, I I have no idea what's going on or like how the hospital systems work. You're like, I have no idea what's going on here. Yeah. So like, obviously you're going to be hesitant. Well, it's, it's, I mean, that's, and that's the, the ass part is because all of this, all the information that we learn, it's not like it's hidden from the rest of the world. 
we study using public resources. Like, I mean, maybe you have to pay some money because whatever, like Amboss and stuff like that. But the, the, the point is that like the reason why like medical schools exist is more to have it like a structured way to train physicians. But in reality, hypothetically, you could technically learn everything <laughs> that we learn in medical school on your own. It's just that people won't do that. They're not going to do that. No. But then but then it then it's but a I problem mean, like, that they it seems elitist. Yeah. Even though technically I mean all that information's out there. You just have to look for it. No, it's all published. It's, it's all, all in it's the all, exactly. Yeah, it's all out there. It, it's and people, I'm not people, saying like I could come up with a list of, you know, five textbooks and be like, "Yeah, read these." And like this is like the equivalent of like the renal block or like these five books. You don't think Guyton is God? Huh? You don't think Guyton is God? Stuck for <laughs> Guyton is the Bible of med school now, of yep. first year med school. But now I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. It's just that, it's just that, it somehow met like the medical field became part of like the system. And you know how there's like the. I, I'm going to disagree with you. Well, let me finish because I think. Damn yeah. son, are you <laughs> hungry? I gotta eat. Um, no, I, I meant as in. A lot of people just have like a general distrust for authority and oh, for the yes, system, yes. and and they consider medicine part of that system, and then, yes. and then in turn then distrust medicine, like oh I don't trust the government, so I'm also not going to trust doctors, even though because they work for the government, which even mm-hmm. even though they do in like every and other every country. time you get a vaccine, they're putting trackers in you. Yeah, wait, they're putting <laughs> chips. Yeah, they're like, putting chips in us, like yeah. lays. Oh, I hope like, mine's salt and vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. I'll take a nice cool ranch. But oh, cool ranch Dorito. Oh yeah, that'd be nice. Run through my veins. But oh, yeah, it, it is it is unfortunate, and I think like you said, COVID kind of <clears throat> perpetuated all of that. But it's always been like that. I mean, even yeah. even before, it's just that's what I was gonna. Everyone say. everyone is just more vocal about it now. Yeah, I was, gonna, I was gonna say like medicine, even from like the start of formal medical training, has been elitist. Yeah, and white. Yeah, and I think it's getting. It's it's still slowly getting better. It's not there yet, but the rest, you know, the rest of the like the the lay people. I know it sounds kind of like like elitist, elitist, but <laughs> that's the that's the the term for it. Or uh, just people who people you can say people who aren't physicians. Well, that's what a lay person is—the person who isn't knowledgeable in the field that you're talking about. Okay, I'm not going to argue. With you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, they just you know haven't gotten. Caught, caught wind of that yet and i think you know social media has made it worse and better at the same time yeah like it's, it's helped a little bit it's also not opposites. helped a little bit like it's really hard to tell like how well it's working i don't know at least what from what i sort of notice on social media is that like social media does give physicians a good outlet to shed some light on not only medical training and like what we have to go through to become a physician and what a physician does like in their day-to-day life. Um, but I think it, on the other hand, it's also like a double-edged sword because it's like, you know, you get like t- keyboard warriors that are like, oh, well, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you do that? Or like, why are you wearing that? Like, oh, like, why are you doing that on the weekend? Oh, you're a doctor. Like, why shouldn't you be like above everybody else? Like you have such high ha- high standards. Like, what are you doing out? Like, enjoying your time like shouldn't you be like at the hospital working so it's like you get yeah, both sides you do i mean we, we we actually it's funny we we had that we had a whole class on this yeah, literally oh, yeah. like last week but i, I was I thought, not there because i was sicky yeah but you, i mean did you still did you end up looking at any no they stuff? never sent me anything oh mm. well, that's odd yeah. but we t- i mean we told i, mean, I want i want to hear your opinion on it because i don't think we've talked too much about it because one of the one of the big pressing points of the class was about like i wouldn't say autonomy but more like um, personal like the ability to make more personal decisions and how that being public may affect your professional identity like like you said going out on the weekend or something like you know in a it's just a social setting that you're not like i'm a doctor and i'm getting drunk right now like you're mm-hmm. i'm a i'm just a person who's going out with some friends but now that the internet exists and pe- people can have videos and stuff online like where do you think the boundary is like you know see when it comes to like the weekend stuff and like i know a lot of like women physicians will get hate for like oh if they're at a family vacation on the beach and they're posting a bikini picture like they're getting 
dragged through the mud for it. And I don't think personally that that's correct. And I don't think someone should be adjusting like their personal life because of the career they've chosen. Because at the end of the day, like you've worked your butt off, right? To get where you're at, at least freaking enjoy it. Like if you're at the beach with your family, like you're and you're wearing a bikini, like who the f- cares? You yeah, there's I'm nowhere, saying? there's nowhere in in my oath that I took in medical school, and I there was no contract that I signed in medical school that said like I can't go to the beach and wear a swimsuit. Like right, if like what who what is my profession, my professional identity have to dictate? my personal free yeah. time right well, the because thing is, if, it, it is wrong like i like to no like, no no like we, it, yeah like we it, talked about that like that, we obviously well, all agree like on they the, all wrote, the issue. they wrote the paper on it and they're like oh blah 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 like these women surgeons who posted pictures at the beach in their bikinis like yeah, are less qualified than but the us issue men is like what do we tie every i was like no that's no that's bullshit the, the but, thing is like it's it's obviously wrong but like yeah. it's it, it it still happens and there's no way to like just stop it so what is like the I don't know, like, what do you think is, like, a good way to deal with, like, a, like an issue like this? My like, solution would, you, yeah. would be wear it, just don't post about it. Yeah. Period. That's it. Like, if you're not posting about it, no one's really going to know about it. So, like, it's true. don't put yourself in that position to, like, advertise yourself. Like, obviously, this sounds bad because now you're adjusting the way that you're living your life on the weekend to, like accommodate for other people <laughs> jazz stomach's going I'm like, insane I'll, I'll this, but anyway yeah I, um but like you said like it's not gonna go anywhere like that mentality is still mm-hmm. very much re- prevalent in our world today so if you yeah. just do one thing and just don't post it you think that or don't advertise it then i feel like you'll run into less trouble do you think that like working in the medical field you kind of have to come to terms and make a lot of i want like exceptions or not exceptions i'd say like adjustments you you have to make a lot of adjustments yes do you think that you have to do like make a lot of adjustments like just working in the medical field compared to other professional fields i think a lot of people they don't talk enough about like the real like the changes you have to make i think every profession does like i think inherently every profession you have to look at who's standing in front of you and adjust yourself accordingly and you don't even have to be a professional to do that like you do that with your family if you're talking to grandma or if you know you're going to your grandma's house like you're not going to wear a certain thing you're not going to talk a certain way because you know who's standing in front of you and you know whose like house you're in if you're at your own house like we're just going to sit around like bums and eat two for six like that's how it's going to be but (laughs) Like that if was you're very specific. <laughs> that was a that was a shout out to Bifrozidine and other bum. Oh yeah, shout out shout out by Les- yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's his name in in my eyes now. That's my brother. Yeah. But um But yeah, like I think that translates into the workplace too, right? Like when you step into your office, you have to look at what patient's standing in front of you and adjust yourself accordingly. And do you think it's an issue on the other end of things, like on the physician end, the people who maybe don't want to make those adjustments? I think it's going to be a bigger problem now because mm-hmm. I think our generation is the one that's like super gung-ho about like, I'm going to express myself the way that I want and people are going to like it. And if they don't like it, they can suck it. Mm-hmm. So I think that's going to start becoming a problem. Um because we're still going to be practicing with people and generations that don't necessarily think that way. Mm-hmm. And I think it's going to create a little bit of a yeah. of an issue. I think it's like the hard reality you have to face, especially in the medical field, because of the, yeah. of the, the liberties you have to, or the adjustments you have to make like solely for your patient, that you really have to like come to terms with the fact that it's not going to go the way you want it to go a lot of the times. Yeah. I mean, like... When you're on rotations, like even when you're even up through your residency, like you're still working under somebody's license. Like mm-hmm. that is their livelihood. Like if you make a mistake, a big mistake, and you that's get sued you. for malpractice, right? That's not you getting that's sued. That's not you. That's, that's either them. the hospital's insurance company or if you work at a, at a at a clinic, like a some guy or you know, some physician that started their own clinic, 
that's that their, falls that's under their, their license, medical yeah. malpractice. And then they're really not going to want to keep you around very much longer. Unless yeah. like nobody saw it coming, but that's, yeah. you know, that's just like a, but I think, I think, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you have to come to terms. Like that's, that's your boss. That. Exactly. Like if yeah. your boss yeah. says, you're not following the dress code. No, but even if, go home even if you're the boss, like there are a lot of things that even though you're the boss and technically you make the rules, it's your clinic, whatever, you know, there's still things some things that you're going to have gonna be able to, to control. you're going to have to make some adjustments. You have to adjust. Yeah. I mean, we chose a selfless profession. Mm -hmm. That's the like basis of it. So like you got to be selfless a little bit and you got to like, can't like, just don't show up with like, piercings through your eyeballs yeah. like yeah maybe that would be good because maybe an old patient won't like that mm -hmm. yeah like does it do i personally think that it's a reflection of your knowledge no no but other people do and so yeah. don't don't set up barriers in front of yourself that are easily like taken away yeah right i think i think that's a good way of putting it all right well it's been an hour and a half Oh Lord! Damn, I wanted to talk about because we talk about this a lot. What? Growing up and getting beat as a child. Oh my God! Oh, hell yeah! Because that goes into <laughs> culture, and I, I love know, it. I think I think we're planning on doing um, what we're coining the cluster f podcast soon, where we're gonna have all the all six of the group on, oh, and we're gonna be yeah. passing. Right, we'll talk about that during that. That'll be okay, fun. Fine. I think that'll be more fun to say for then, but um. Yeah. So how did this turn into like a straight up med podcast? I this was a more serious podcast, but I think it was good. I I, I mean, it I, I think it wasn't like. Yeah. No, it was like serious topics. It was more experienced stuff, you know. But anyway, cue the music. Okay. Um, we have to do our round of. Of of advice. <coughs> right? We always end the podcast. Our round of advice. Everyone's I don't know. gonna you're just a little little, little little snippet, little piece. That's the point, you know. Yeah, it has to come from the heart. So Jacob, you can start us off as always. Oh, you want me to start? Yeah, what's um, the quote of the day? What's what's the advice of the day? Oh, this is a good one. Um, you better not steal the one I said. No, I'm not. I'm saying that one. I've been saying this since I was like, I don't know, a kid. I always heard it from my dad. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's facts. You go next. Am I next? I'm okay, okay, okay. Um... <laughs> My advice, and this may sound like I'm like salty about something I'm not. It's just like general advice. Um, relationships, be they romantic or just friendship relationships, they're kind of like farts. If you have to force them, they're probably going to be shit. <laughs> so, so I'm saying, if you have to, it's, it's just did you come, come up natural. with that by yourself? No, I saw it on TikTok. <laughs> I did not come up with that myself. Oh, brother. All right, Alina. Why are you looking at me like that? Um, I wasn't talking about anyone. I don't know what to say. Just like, just like a, you know, what's some general advice you have? Hmm. Some general advice. I'm trying to think about wise things my mom has said to me. Okay. She'll probably be upset if I didn't shout her out on the pod. Okay. <laughs> Make sure you add enough salt. No. You Let to, your you ancestors have... tell you when to yeah, stop seasoning exactly. and then add a little bit more. Yeah, that no, yeah, exactly. That's what you're supposed to do. Um what yeah. else? No, she's always just said if you're just a good person, no one can say anything bad about you, so just be good people. Don't be an ass. Because there are a lot of people in the world that are ass. Yeah, don't be an asshole. I think that's I like it. Yeah. It's 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 nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Damn. Oh, <laughs> Mind blown. Well, Alina, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. For the unveiling of the new set. Yeah. I hope this. I help with that collage. Yeah. I hope this. I hope this looks nice. I think it looks beautiful. I, I think it's gonna turn out. It's gonna turn out well. Thank you, guys. Zayna, come here. <laughs> Zayna has been Zayna has been sitting literally on the outside this whole time. Why not? Come on, just come say hi. No. No, she, she was she was uh, quelling Misu and she was having her psychotic breakdown. Uh, I started taking oh, some wait, pictures. Oh, I have to get Kofi. Oh yeah, okay, go go grab Kofi. Go on, grab Kofi. Go You're gonna have to squeeze through the door though. Make a squeeze. Uh, are you, can you get her out? Which way are you going? What? What is happening right now? Yeah, we, we should. I could have moved them. <laughs> <laughs> 
Should I do the flashing one? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna cut this out. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll cut back. How do I do this? Be careful of the camera. Yeah. There's flash. I'm pretty sure it says flash at the bottom. Is this still recording? Yeah, I, I think it is, yeah. You see the red flashing? No, the screen's on the other side. In the front. Yeah, it's, 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 it's flashing red in the corner. You see that? Are you blind? Are you, are you, can you have enough vision to see? Oh, yeah. Do you see the flashing red dot yeah. in the corner, Zaina? Yeah. Okay, so it's been gone. <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> oh, Lord. Perfect. All right. Look at oh, it's Stroves? <laughs> this is, it's Stroves. Well, Kofi, what's... Oh my What's up, God. Sucker? This thing is... How do I get it back to normal? Just turn it back. Just hit the, just hit the percentage, what you wanted to put it on. My cat oh, here. Oh, let me see it. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. My oh, cat Lord. here the other day. I come home. Oh, this is... Yeah, after to... breakfast. After Jad's birthday breakfast, brunch, whatever you yeah, want to call it. Yeah, brekkie. We brekkie. come home and Sajitha is like, what is all of this on the floor? And I look down and it's like a freaking murder scene. There's blood everywhere. <laughs> <Murder. laughs> <laughs> There's blood everywhere, splattered on the walls, bloody paw prints on the floor. I was like, what in the hell happened? Come to find out through our little investigative skills man's thought it would be a fun idea to play with knives in the sink yeah and then we assumed that he was just like <clears throat> going like this and cut spring. his paw open blood everywhere he's good now acting like nothing happened let me see him. <coughs> well you, want, you have any advice Kofi? no don't play with knives <laughs> you're just sniffing the mic Okay. Well, I think there's been another successful episode. Hell yeah. Thanks for watching. Hell Lena. yeah, brother. Thanks for the good conversation. Yes. Of course. Jad, happy belated. Thank you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, like, comment, subscribe. retweet. Wish Jad a happy birthday. Send this comments. to your parents. Uh, shout out, shout out Besma. Shout out my mom for watching again. I have to shout her out every time. Also, shout out, shout out Sparky's mom. <laughs> Shout, shout out, out Sparky's apparently, mom. Apparently, apparently, Grace's mom is now a viewer as well. Hell yeah! Shout out Alina's brother's friends who are apparently viewers now. We're we're spreading oh, yeah. slowly. Yo, but shout surely out, we're spreading. Shout out Josh. I saw that you watch this now. <laughs> you said you want to be on. So. so so if you if you're watching this right now, tell your parents about us. We're parents like we gotta us. we gotta transcend generations yeah. here. Also, drop a comment what you think your Golfie, favorite part of the off. new studio is. Yeah. Yeah, and if you don't say it's the light, then uh, then I'm gonna block you. Okay, well my brother's calling. This is the perfect right. time to stop. Bye. He's in her litter box. <laughs>